just trying to build the anticipation, you know. Uh, we have uh, nothing to disclose. So hyperkinetic gallbladder is not a very well understood condition. It's, it's a functional disorder of the gallbladder, just like biliary dyskinesia. Uh, it is thought that it arises from a rapid contraction and emptying of the gallbladder. And the, the diagnosis is made by a HIDA scan, a CCK HIDA scan. Uh, the definition is uh, usually um, uh, ejection fraction of more than 80% uh, is classified as hyperkinetic gallbladder. Biliary dyskinesia, which is the more commonly studied functional disorder of the gallbladder, is defined by ejection fraction of less than 35 to 40 percent. And most of the studies are uh, about uh, biliary dyskinesia. However, there are very few studies looking at uh, uh, patients who have biliary colic and hyperkinetic gallbladder. Uh, the purpose of our study was to look at uh, the response to cholecystectomy in uh, patients who have uh, biliary colic and hyperkinetic gallbladder. So we looked at a, did a retrospective chart review of uh, um, our uh, patients uh, over a four-year period. Uh, our study was approved by the IRB. Uh, the inclusion criteria was um, patients who had a biliary colic, that is abdominal pain related to food, in epigastric right upper quadrant area. Uh, patients had normal-looking gallbladder on ultrasound, that is, there was no stones, uh, gallbladder wall thickening, or any signs of cholecystitis. And um, the ejection fraction of the gallbladder on HIDA scan was uh, more than 80 percent. The data we uh, collected um, uh, included um, age, gender, BMI, preoperative symptoms, comorbidities, additional tests they had to undergo, like um, um, a CAT scan, a gastric emptying study, um, how was the surgery performed, laparoscopic open, length of hospital stay, 30 days uh, uh, post-operative readmission, and uh, we looked at the pathology um, of the gallbladder as well. Uh, two week uh, post operative data was collected by reviewing uh, clinic notes. Uh, long term um, follow up data was collected by a telephone interview. And we had a standardized questionnaire um, uh, where all the patients were asked if um, their preoperative abdominal symptoms after cholecystectomy had completely resolved, partially resolved, um, remained the same, or got worse after surgery. Um, the data was uh, recorded as a uh, descriptive statistics and calculated as a mean standard deviation along with range. So um, our study uh, included uh, 32 patients over around a four-year period, and uh, these patients met the inclusion criteria. Um, 31 patients uh, were, we were able to contact for long-term data uh, collection. All the surgeries were performed in our hospital at Mercy, Iowa City, and uh, they were performed by two surgeons. All uh, the patients uh, were discharged home the same day, so it was an outpatient surgery in all the patients, and um, there was no intraoperative complications and no 30-day readmission in any of these patients. The mean uh, age uh, for these patients were uh, 46 years, and uh, the mean BMI was uh, 30. 84% um, of the patients were female. The mean uh, gallbladder ejection fraction was 92%. Um, 68% of these patients uh, had undergone um, additional tests uh, other than ultrasound and HIDA scan before they actually had a cholecystectomy. These tests were um, uh, upper endoscopy, lower endoscopy, gastric emptying study, CAT scans. And the most common uh, comorbidity seen in these patients were uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. The pathology uh, was reviewed on all uh, 32 patients, and 90% uh, of these patients had uh, chronic cholecystitis. Two patients had a normal-looking gallbladder, and one had just uh, cholesterolosis. So um, um, looking at the, um, the results, 74% uh, of these patients um, um, had a complete uh, resolution of their preoperative abdominal symptoms after cholecystectomy. 16% had partial resolution, and 10% uh, patients had no change in symptoms. Uh, there was no patient who had worsening of symptoms after cholecystectomy. Uh, comparing uh, the three uh, response group, um, and they were pretty similar, except uh, uh, patients who had no change in symptoms uh, were um, um, older uh, patients. Uh, average age was 54 as compared to 45 and 42, and their BMI was lower as well, um, 24.7 as compared to 30 and 32. Um, the ejection fraction was pretty much uh, similar. We all also looked at uh, if these patients had a reproduction of symptoms with a cholecystokinin injection during HIDA scan. Uh, 19 patients had a reproduction of symptoms with a CCK injection, and 
Uh, out of these, uh, 13 patients had complete resolution of symptoms, three had a um, partial resolution, and three had no change in symptoms. So 84% of patients who had uh, preoperative uh, reproduction of uh, uh, symptoms with CCK injection had a complete or partial resolution of symptoms. So um, uh, the, the pathophysiology of uh, hyperkinetic gallbladder is not very clear. We, we, we are not exactly sure how it works, but uh, the, one of the hypo hypotheses is that um, uh, these patients probably have increased secretion of cholecystokinin or increased uh, uh, CCK receptor uh, density um, which causes rapid uh, contraction of the gallbladder, and uh, uh, rapid contraction of the gallbladder will cause increased intraluminal pressure, causes mucosal injury, which is uh, seen in most of these patients on um, pathology. Um, our studies did not look at the CCK level um, of these patients uh, um, preoperatively, and, and I could not find any study which had done it in the past, but uh, future studies can look at the CCK level in these patients to give us a better idea about uh, the pathophysiology of uh, hyperkinetic gallbladder. So um, our studies showed that 90% um, of the patients who had biliary colic with gallbladder hyperkinesia had a either complete or partial resolution of symptoms. There, there are not a lot of studies um, regarding this topic, but um, the few studies which are there, they have pretty much similar uh, results. Um, this is a study uh, um, from 2009. Uh, they looked at um, the response of uh, cholecystectomy in patients with uh, hyperkinetic gallbladder. Uh, they had 28 patients, and 79% um, uh, of the patients had complete resolution of symptoms, and 97% of the patients had uh, symptom improvement after cholecystectomy. Uh, this is an um, uh, abstract which was uh, presented at DDW and um, was published in Gastroenterology. And uh, they looked at patients who had uh, either biliary dyskinesia, that is gallbladder ejection fraction of less than 40%, or hyperkinetic gallbladder, that is ejection fraction more than 80%. They had um, 39 and uh, 27 patients in each group, and uh, um, the response was 59% um, um, patient had complete resolution in biliary dyskinesia and 69% in the um, hyperkinetic group. Uh, there are some uh, pediatric population studies regarding it, and one is... Uh, uh, the study where they had 12 patients, um, all less than 18 years old, and um, all patients had complete resolution of symptoms after cholecystectomy, and all patients had um, um, gallbladder, uh, all patients had chronic cholecystitis on, uh, col chronic cholecystitis on pathology as well. So um, uh, one of the strengths of our study is that um, uh, it's the largest, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's the lar largest study um, in, in, in terms of the number of patients we have, and uh, we assess the long-term um, response by actually talking to the patient and knowing exactly how their symptoms were uh, as compared to just looking at the charts. Uh, it's, uh, again, the limitations are it's a retrospective study, study small sample size, and uh, there's possible selection bias because we did not include patients who had hyperkinetic gallbladder and did not have cholecystectomy. So to conclude, um, um, our results uh, suggest that biliary colic in the setting of hyperkinetic gallbladder have symptomatic improvement uh, with cholecystectomy. These findings are significant and promising. However, uh, I think large, well-designed prospective studies are needed to confirm these results. Thank you.